Okay, guys, um, welcome to our team call tonight. It is Wednesday, June 24th, and um, I'm very thankful for all of you taking the time out of your day to jump on this call. Um, I would like to um, welcome Angie Gearhart as our newest team member. She signed on as a coach last night, so I'm very excited for her. She's had some stellar results with the 21 day fix and um, has had quite a few people asking her how she's doing with the program or what she's doing and how she's getting results. So she has um, decided to pay it forward and share that with others. So we're excited to welcome you to the team, Angie. Um, I would also like to congratulate Becky and um, Kelly Palsisco for having some numbers on the Success Club board. That's awesome, you guys. You're doing a great job. Um, and also a big shout out to Donna. She uh, made her first sale today. So that's really exciting as a new coach to, um, you know, get that first client underneath you and kind of get over that hump and um, start building that confidence. So great job, Donna. That's awesome. So um, tonight I am over the moon excited for Miss Shelley Heim to be on our call tonight. Um, Shelly is, um, I actually got in touch with her kind of through Kelly. She was one of Kelly's success partners last year as they were both pushing for elite and five star. So it's huge to have her on the call with us, you guys. She's a very successful coach. She started coaching um, in 2011. She was a discount coach and was using P90X. Um, in January of 2012, she started working her business. Uh, she became a premier coach in 2013, um, and then she really pushed the limits and hit five-star elite coach in 2014, which is amazing. That's a huge accomplishment, you guys. So she's done very, very well for herself. And um, making a point to get to that status where she's at, she has made Success Club non-negotiable for the last 42 months. 42 months. That is huge. Huge. That's amazing, Shelly. Um, so that's really cool. Um, she's done some amazing things. Um, I've watched a lot of her videos. I just really love her vibe and her personality. She um, She's taken her failures and um, made them her successes. She's learned from them. She hasn't let them stop her. And um, she's moving forward in her business and is continuing to pay it forward and kick butt and is a perfect example of it doesn't matter what your age is, it doesn't matter what your background is, if you do the three vital behaviors, you make this success club non-negotiable, and you stay consistent, you can make this happen. So without further ado, I'm going to open up the call to Miss Shelley, and I'm very excited um, to hear what she has to share with us. So make sure you have pen and paper, you guys, so you can take some good notes. Thank you, Corey. Um, wow, I'm, that's kind of made me emotional, but yeah, it's been a long, um, not long, it's been, let's see, uh, three and a half years now of working the business actively since 2012, and it's flown by, but huge things happened in my life um, during this three and a half years, and Beachbody gave me tools. Had I not been in Beachbody, I would never have the tools, especially through personal development that I've gained to overcome some really adverse situations that have happened in my life. So the first thing though I want to talk to you about and um, is my achievement in Success Club. And that is truly, truly what has driven everything about my business to where it is today. And I think I might go into seven star qualification tomorrow. Um, I, you know, and rank's not that important to me um, anymore, but success club points are. And if you do, if you do the success, if you hit success club, if you make success club non-negotiable, there is no re, there is no way your business will not improve. And when I became a, active coach in 2012 of January, I was just bored one day on a rainy day in, here in Oregon. And I, I was never ever presented the business opportunity. I did not know anything about it. 
So I got online and I just happened to go into my coach online office because I was a discount coach. And I, yes, I had sold a few bags of Shakeology. So I knew that there was the retail side of Beachbody and I've been a hairstylist and salon owner for 29 years. I'm, I'm 47 years old. I'm almost 48. I'll be 48 in September. So this all was happening three and a half years ago after I'd kind of hit a nice goal in my fitness journey with, with Beachbody and Shakeology and really got my nutrition dialed in and became a lot healthier for many reasons. And, you know, I could go on and on and on about that. But when I started in January, I just looked at the back office and I went, I could, there's more to this business than I ever knew the team cycle bonuses. And I happened to come across a PDF that said, um, how to earn. And I was just blown away by this, this whole thing that was in front of me. And I didn't know anything about network marketing. I had tried another nutritional company in my early twenties called Omnitrition. And I, that was network marketing, but I never could grasp it. My mind was so wrapped around um, retail and the beauty industry that I didn't, I had no idea what legs meant and cycle bonuses and quarterly bonuses and all of that. So I decided, I kept hearing about challenge groups and challenge groups. So I thought I would look into what that was all about. I started my first challenge group in January with no guidance. I couldn't even figure out how to sell my people that wanted to join my challenge groups a challenge pack. So First of all, I want you to know that where we were three and a half years ago in our back office is completely different than where we are now. And what you have access to in your back office and all of our trainings and all the tools that have been created and improved upon over the last three and a half years is unbelievable. And I flew by the seat of my pants for months. That first month in January, I did figure out how to sell challenge packs and I sold five of them and I hit Success Club 10. I started another challenge group the next month in February and I hit success club 10 again. And, and I did it three months in a row. And at that time, the success club trip, the free trip that you hear about every year was the, all the coaches were going to the Bahamas and I didn't really know what that meant. I just thought it was kind of cool. So I, I, somebody finally said to me in my upline, they realized what I had been doing and they reached out to me and they said, you're at Success Club 10 three months in a row. That's really amazing. And, you know, had you qualified several months ago, you would have earned this free trip. And I was like, well, is there a trip the next year? And she said, yeah, they're, we're going to Disney World the next year. And I was like, well, I'm going to go on that trip. So I just, you know, in a sense, felt like I lucked out a little bit because because I hit Success Club 10 my first month and my second month and my third month. But that set a very strong benchmark for me to reach and go for every month. And I saw the progression and I and and it just made sense to me to sign people up who bought a challenge pack as a coach because they could get the discount. And that's how I got into the business. So I never discounted that for anybody else. I didn't even know that I wouldn't get a commission after they were a coach. I had no idea that that happened. I just thought that they deserved that opportunity. So from there on, I, I just made it non-negotiable that Success Club was a part of my world. It just had to happen each and every month. And I started following top coaches and they were doing the same thing. And then um, so a year went by and I had hit success club 10 or higher every single month and I was building a nice team and by then I was diamond and, and I was coasting for a while. Um, I, but what I want you to know is success club, you became a coach because you were presented products and a program that you connected with and that your coach helped you connect with and you clearly are on this call because you want to build a business you're not just a discount coach you have you believe in the products and the programs passionately and if you are not hitting success club every month 
you are not sharing the product. You're not sharing your passion. You're not sharing what you signed up for. You're not doing what you said you were going to do when you became a beach body coach, which was pay it forward and help other people. And I know most of you on this call because you're not a lot different than, than people on my team. We all have similarities. And one, what is the first thing you're asked? Why did you become a beach body coach? And most of you will say in the very beginning, because I want to help people. I'm sure that came out of your mouth. I'm sure you've written it down. And if you're not sharing the business, if you're not, excuse me, what, how Beachbody changed your life, how it touched you, you're not doing what you said you were going to do. And you're not going to move your business forward if you're not hitting Success Club. And, and for, you know, we have to, we have to quantify this because it is a business. So we have to understand that, you know, it's really cool to help people and it's really cool to pay it forward. But what is really driving you besides helping people? There's your dreams have to be a little bit bigger and sometimes a lot bigger to keep you, to keep you driving and moving forward to hit that success club every month. And there have been months, I mean, there is every time the first of the month comes around for me, I have nervous knots in my belly that I'm not going to make success club every single time, every single month. I am no different than you. I think, you know, I don't have leads lined up anymore um, because I never put people on hold to wait to make a sale so that I get those success club points the next month whether it's the last day of the month or 10 days before the month ends, I don't want to make people wait. I don't want to give them time to change their mind. So I work my success club points up until the very last minute on the 30th or 31st of every single month until 8.59 or midnight or whatever that cutoff time is for us. Um, I, and, and then I start all over again next month with new prospects and new leads and, and always continuing to invite. And the one thing, I know this because I'm going through a training right now with my team on success club points. The, and I asked them the other day, what, on a scale of one to 10, what is your strongest point in the three vital behaviors? And what is your weakest? How do you rate yourself on the, just those three vital behaviors on, the, on a scale of one to 10? And not one coach on my team marked above six in inviting. It's part of the three vital behaviors. And there's no way that you're gonna hit success club if you're not inviting and you're not sharing these products and programs and how they changed your life. So you have to go deeper. What are your fears about inviting? Are you afraid that people are going to judge you? Are you afraid you're going to sound too salesy? Are you afraid that you're going to lose friends? Are you, going to, are you afraid of what people are going to think about you? And you have, and then that ties into personal development because personal development is going to build your confidence in those areas that you are fearful about inviting. Rock stars, you all are products of the products. You got that one down. We all have that one down. But you have to, have to, have to get inviting at the top. You have to make that, you have to perfect that in some ways. And the only way you're going to be perfected is by jumping out of that plane and facing your fears and, and not, and just, turning on that little voice that says, you know what, today I'm not going to care what people think about me. I'm not going to care. I'm just going to put that invite out there and I am going to be open to objection and rejection. And it doesn't matter because for me, I can't not share this business. This business, this, these products have changed my life. I can't not share that. And there is no way I can, I can, repay the people that helped me in the beginning and introduced me to these products. The only way that I can repay them in a sense is by paying it forward myself. 
and sharing the business more and more. So of course it's uncomfortable in the beginning and of course you have these fears, but those fears are going to keep paralyzing you if you do not work on overcoming them. And it takes practice and it takes a lot of no's. And you hear us all the time saying, go for the no, go for the no, go for the no. You know, if you only talk to one or two people a day and they say no and you're done, you're not going to get anywhere. You've got to, you've got to invite more people. You've got to find ways to increase your war market. And, and you do that by building relationships. You don't have to post links. You don't have to be salesy. It's about making friends and being social and, and opening yourself up a little bit. So if you passionately believe in these products with your heart and soul, you all have a story about them, a transformation, whether it's an emotional transformation, a physical transformation, a financial transformation, you all have something to offer somebody, to inspire somebody, to build a relationship around. And, you know, I have girls on my team who are so stuck at Success Club 2 every single month, Success Club 2. They were on the board, but only with Success Club 2 or 3. And they got tired of it. And they wanted to move their business forward. So instead of just inviting three to five people a day, they started sharing with 20 people a day, 30 people a day. 50 people a day. I hate to say this, but in a lot of sense, this is a numbers game. So if you say you have a, a customer base of 100 people that are actually customers of you, of yours in your Beachbody Coach Online office, out of, out of those 100 people, you may get 10 people who want to sign as a coach. And out of those 10 people, you may get one person who becomes a diamond coach. So when you look at those numbers, it sounds a little bit scary, but all that means is you've just got to make more friends and share the business with more people and, and hit success club every month and your business is going to grow and grow and grow. So in the, in the beginning, when I started this, the first thing I made a mistake about and I, let's see, I started eating clean at 43. I was, comp no, I didn't. I'm going to lie about, I lied about that. I started um, realizing at 43 that my, my body was different. I was in a rut in my life, my relationship, my marriage. Um, I was miserable. I didn't like what I saw in the mirror, my skin. I felt like I was aging rapidly every time I looked in the mirror. It was scary. And I thought it was as good as it was I was as good as I was gonna get. I thought this is age, you know, I'm not gonna I can't improve. This is it. I looked at other people, my peers who were 43 and we were you know, we weren't we just weren't healthy people. We were partying still, we were eating crap, we were eating sugar, we were eating like we were 20 and we weren't and I started doing P90X. I bought it off of the infomercial, and I thought it was my big last hurrah. And I do have a fitness background. I was in a group instructor for many years, but hadn't taught in a long time up until that point. Um, so I, w I was running. I was, you know, thought I was fit. But when I look back, I really wasn't fit. And I wasn't sleeping at night. It Things just were not working. So I, I ordered P90X and I thought it, it'd be my last ditch effort into seeing if my body could actually change. I did P90X for one full year, never listened to anybody. I was completely uncoachable. So I want you to write that down. You have to be coachable. You have to listen. You have to do what these people, this company is telling you to do. These trainers are telling you to do. There is no reason to reinvent the wheel. Everything is done for us, okay? But I wouldn't listen, did not respond to the assigned coach that reached out to me because I was somebody's lead. I did not read the nutritional guide. I did not take my before and afters. I 
just did P90X for a full year. And I, I did it every day and I got super duper strong. My husband told me I was crazy. He thought I could never complete the first week, but I did. And I went on to keep doing it. And when I took my pictures finally a year later, I was just in tears because I had worked so hard for one year and, and never listened and thought I knew everything. And those pictures were really, really embarrassing. Not much had changed. I could do a few pull-ups. I got a lot stronger, but I didn't look that different. I was still drinking alcohol every weekend from Friday night to Sunday. I was, I'd do good all week and then boom, the weekend would come Friday night and I would completely sabotage every effort I did during the, during the week. And I, every Monday I'd start over. Every Monday I'd start over and every Friday would come and I'd have that first glass of wine and all of my, my ha good habits that I had during the week were right out the window. This happened for years for me, but it really happened during that year of P90X. So finally I met up with a friend who was a, my coach, is my coach now, and she doesn't work the business, but she was really um, healthy. And she helped me to clean up my diet. And she said, why don't you stop doing P90X and go to Shalene Extreme? Her workouts are easier. There's not as much time constraint. But she helped me clean up my diet. And she got me started on Shakeology. And in six weeks, I completely transformed my physical body. I lost 15 pounds. I lost over 15% body fat. And I could not believe when I took pictures six weeks later what had actually happened to me. I drank my Shakeology every single day, like she told me to do, and I became coachable. And that, and I think at that point, yes, I was 40, 44 at that point. And that's when I signed as a discount coach. So all this ties into the next year when I actually started coaching and and I didn't, I started following top coaches and I, the, the second mistake I made was I was comparing myself to everybody else. I was comparing myself to girls, coaches in their 20s who were having success. I was comparing myself to 30 year olds who were in their 20s having success. And I can tell you even Kelly Hanner and I started kind of coaching at the same time. And we were put in Ann's group around the same time, Ann Doble's group. And we were kind of neck and neck in, you know, not that we were in competition of each other, but we just paralleled, our coaching paralleled. I think she might be qualifying for Seven Star Diamond tomorrow, too. It's crazy how, our, how we just progressed. So you can see that although I'm probably old enough to be Kelly's mother, I still was just as, as successful as Kelly. But I tried to do things that Kelly was doing, which was putting myself in a bikini on Facebook and it wasn't a good thing. I was, you know, people thought I, I never got a lot of engagement off those pictures for very good reasons. And it wasn't because I didn't look okay. It was because that wasn't me. I was 44 years old and my peers at the time on Facebook were, were my, were friends that, you know, either they were intimidated by me or they thought I lost my marbles or they thought I was trying to like have a midlife crisis. And, you know, it was just ridiculous. And I was, I would let myself get so jealous of people like Kelly Hanner who could do that and get 500 likes on one page, you know, on one post of herself in a bikini or herself in a tiny little shorty outfit, you know, doing a workout. And I would just beat my head against the wall going, why am I not getting as many likes as her? It was because I'm not a Kelly Hanner. I love her. I love Kelly. And what I learned from Kelly as a success partner is that I had to stop being everybody else and be me and do what was going to work for me. And then I started realizing, okay, Ann Doval, who's two years older than my, I am, she's 50 now. I've never seen her in a bikini on Facebook and I never will. She quilts, she homeschools, she goes to church. She is a down to earth, 
Nebraska girl that just is truly uniquely unapologetically her. And if she can look, if she can be successful in this business and not post bikini shots on Facebook, then I certainly can. And so can other people. And even if you have the hottest body in the world, if that's not your, if it's not part of your values, don't put yourself out there doing uncomfortable things because people who follow you know when it's not right, when they know when it's not you. So comparing yourself to others, number two, it's such, it will paralyze you. And there's a lot of personal development out there. I wish I could re recommend one good book. Um, honestly, you're going to hear a lot of people say You Are a Badass is one of the best books they ever read. Um, a lot of women that I work with and a lot of girls on my team that I work with have read that book. But I didn't really relate to it too much because I'm, I'm not of that generation. You know, I'm, I didn't connect. I, I read it and I finished it and I took a lot of good nuggets from it, but it wasn't um, something that really boosted my confidence enough to stop comparing myself to others. And basically what I do now is I just put blinders on. I stopped following a lot of coaches that um, are highly, highly successful, but I found myself just getting anxiety every time I went to their page because I... I thought I should be doing what they were doing, but I knew it wasn't me. And when I tried to do what they were doing, it didn't work for me. It was so icky feeling. So I really stepped back and I just started being me and sharing who I was without showing a lot of skin and feeling like I had to show a lot of skin or I had to have this you know, 20 year old body in a 40 year old body. And it, you know, it just, I just had to stop looking at all of that. And I, and I don't even really follow a lot of top coaches anymore. I do for inspiration. You know, there's a few out there. I have done Shalene's um, confidence club that really, really helped me in that department of not comparing myself to others. And I, I Google every once in a while um, how not to compare yourself to others, and I get I don't get a lot of books that come up, but I get a lot of blogs that come up, and I'll go to those blogs and I'll print off some of their their key components that they talk about in comparing my yourself to others, and I hang them up um, in my office, and I just read them from time to time, especially when I'm feeling inadequate and that I'm too old for this business. Of course, I felt all those things, and I still do. After I became an elite coach, um, I became very withdrawn and intimidated being around other coaches of that stature in this company because I'm one of the oldest ones in that 200 per people group. And I just, I just found myself froze. I wasn't recruiting. I wasn't, I was still hitting success club early in the year, but I just, it just stifled me and I had to bust through it. So it took a lot of perseverance and a lot of self, a lot of personal development to get through those, those fears and comparing myself to others. But I think I'm on the right track now and found myself again. And it, it's, things are starting to completely come back into place for me. So Stop comparing yourself to others. You are uniquely you. Um, the third thing is I thought my own systems, because I'm older and I've been in business for a long time, were better than what Beachbody could provide us, like the business activity tracker, contact lists, um, videos, training videos. I thought that I knew more or I thought that my system, like I said, my systems were better and I was completely wrong about that. I finally stopped thinking that my little random notes all over the place were working and that tracking wasn't that important or trying to reformulate the bat was, was important. 
I stopped doing all that and I went back to coach basics and I went back to what Beachbody provides us because those tools work. So use them. They're there for you to succeed in your business. And there's no reason, again, whether it's physical fit, whether it's the fitness side of it, the nutrition side of it, or the financial side of it, the coaching side of it, do not try to reinvent the wheel. You're only going to make yourself crazy and give yourself more work and prevent you from having good time management skills. If you're constantly thinking your system might be better. Now, if you find something really cool that's working, then absolutely stick with it. But know that Beachbody provides that for you. And listen to your upline in your trainings and how to use those tools to best suit your needs and to build your business, help you track, help you set goals, help you keep your contacts in order, help you jog your memory. All of that stuff really, really works. They're there for a reason. And, and corporate is improving on every single category all the time. They may not pop up into our office as quick as we like, but they are coming and they come all the time. So don't discount them. They are excellent, excellent training tools, tracking tools, goal setting tools. Um, another mistake I made was I thought people would just come to me. And I thought that I didn't have to, I wouldn't have to do much if I just kept posting on Facebook. I thought I, you know, when they tell you to increase your contacts, there's a reason for that. People aren't going to fall into your lap and they're not going to fall into your lap when you just post links and you're constantly feeding your timeline with beach body stuff. You have to add value. You know, there is nothing wrong with posting a recipe on your timeline. People love that, especially that's, one of the ways I've built my business is through my recipes and I've created a lot of five ingredient recipes only through not having enough time to cook basically. So I do, I, I had to make clean eating work for me. So I did it as simple as possible. And now I was like, well, what am I going to share with people? What am I going to add value to? Well, you don't know how much value a five ingredient chicken dish means to somebody who's busy. It is huge, huge value. You don't have to be all philosophical and deep within your heart when you don't feel like it and make these long posts. Post a recipe with five ingredients and people will go batshit crazy over it. I'm not kidding you. So add value. Lots and lots of value. Value before beach body. And your followers will come. They'll start trusting you. They'll start looking forward to your posts. Um, on my business page, I post on three topics only. Fitness, clean eating, and joy. That's it. Only those three topics. I don't get mixed up in other stuff. I don't um, go to other Beachbody coaches' pages and see that they're posting about kids food that's not, I don't have kids so I'm uniquely me I don't cater to moms they're busy because I'm not a busy mom now I have busy moms that have been attracted to me because of my recipes but I don't do that with that intention of hitting busy moms now if you are a busy mom who's single or have you know you've got another job your husband works too or you know then you utilize all those tips that you've learned that have been working for you throughout your journey to add value to other people. It becomes very simple when you, you just think about your day. Okay, I got up today and I did my chores and I went to work out and I made my Shakeology. And how did you do that? You know, why did you set your alarm to get up that early? What did that mean to you to do that? That's value to somebody. If you can inspire somebody to get their workout done before anybody else, that's value. So keep adding value. Don't think that, um, you know, kissing your Shakeology cup every day and posting a photo of yourself is going to add value. That's not adding value to somebody. You know, they are going to love you by just posting a recipe or a quick little fitness tip, um, something you overcame. 
whether it's doing, hey, today, you know, I've been working on my push-ups. I could never do more than one on my toes, and today I did three because of my consistency. You know, always, 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 if you've, if you've achieved something, you've overcome a struggle, right? So that's a whole story in itself. You've overcome a struggle. How did you overcome that struggle? Consistency, motivation, inspiration, it all adds value. Um, so people are not just going to come to you, basically, is what I'm saying. You have to give them a reason to keep following you. And that reason ha is going to be from the value you offer them each and every day that you come to your Facebook page or your Instagram or what, however you're, you're utilizing social media, whatever platform you're in. And the other mistake I made was I, I just let my age um, in my head paralyze me a lot. I, I, you know, especially now in Beachbody, we're growing so fast. You see a lot. It's, I'm, I'm right there with you. You see a lot of 30 year olds and 20, late 20 year olds having amazing success in this business very, very, very quickly. And understand that you, there's no reason why you can't grow quickly at any age. But there's also no reason that you have to grow super, super quickly or and become a, a five-star diamond in your first year. Yes, there's coaches doing that, but that doesn't have to be you. And that doesn't mean you're not going to have a successful business if you don't do that. Um, you know, I, I still will always hit success club, but I may not become an elite coach this year. You know, there's things that you can – you can do that. Don't define you there or that if you don't succeed, you're not going to, nobody's going to think lesser of you. So you, whether you're 40 or 20, you can't let your age is I'm talking to, you know, older people right now, but you can't let the fact that you're in your forties or fifties or sixties define that you're not going to be a successful beach body coach. There's, you've got to get that out of your head and get past that. And I think um, as older women, we have a lot to offer people. We have a lot to offer younger women. We've been around the block a little bit and our advice matters. And it's so funny because I sign coaches younger than me every single month. I rarely sign a coach that is my age. So I'm obviously adding value and I want to say I have a maternal aspect to a lot of women who are younger than me because of my experiences and because of what I share on my Facebook page and because I open myself up a little bit. It took me a little bit of time to do that. I've always been a little bit of an open book, but sharing my heart, um, my childhood, I came, I grew up in a trailer park. I used to be so horribly embarrassed about that. And I don't care anymore what people think. That is, growing up in a trailer park is part of who I am. It's part of how I became who I am. And obviously I, came to a point in my life where I wanted more for myself and I allowed that to happen, but I would never discriminate against anybody who's in that situation now, or I'm not above living in a trailer park again. You know, I'm not in that mindset. It's just, and I share little bits and pieces about that. Like I shared that one day on my timeline that, I posted pictures of the trailer I grew up in and my brother and, and keep in mind, you know, if some of you followed me, you know that I'm the only one left in my immediate family. My dad, my dad died when I was 18. He was 38. My mom died right after I became a discount coach of completely health related issues. It was so sad. And she was 64. And then my brother, um, 16 months ago, was lost at sea in the Bering Sea in Alaska. He left behind a five week old baby and a five year old son. And his body was never recovered. It was completely devastating. 
But after he died, my heart really opened up through my grief. And I, and I shared a bit about growing up in a trailer park. And I showed pictures of Eric and I sharing a bedroom in a single wide mobile home that we lived in. And, um, and, and how, and I told a small story about that, about how I used to be so embarrassed. And, and now I realize that it's, I would, if I could go back in time and, I would never change how I grew up. I would never be, I'm never going to be embarrassed about that again. And, and I would give anything to be back in that trailer with my mom and my dad and my brother. And I, I'll never have that, but how much, look at how much I've learned and grown from that experience and tied it into my life now. So sharing little bits and pieces of your baggage of your crap, not your whole story flooded all over Facebook in 10 pages, but little nuggets, little pieces of what, how you grew up, what you overcame. Um, drinking was a big issue for me. I share that a lot. Um, I got kicked out of advanced English when I was a senior in high school because I was too social. And, and I always thought it was because I was dumb. I wasn't as smart as the other kids in advanced English. And I was so embarrassed to talk about that for so many years. I went to a really small high school and it, that like was a defining moment in my life where I was so embarrassed by that. And now I'm like, it doesn't even matter. My gosh, I learned so much from that experience. I've shared that. I go back to, you know, my very first marriage of four years when I was 21 years old. I've shared pieces of that, what I overcame. So what I'm trying to say is, as older women, we have so much to give, so much wisdom, so much advice, so much. There's a lot of people out there who need maternal um, mentors, in a sense. You know, it, there's so much we have to offer. And that can completely tied into building relationships in your beast body business and helping other women and attracting um, younger women to your team. I just signed a girl the other day, a beautiful girl. I, you know, it was so funny because she is probably 28 years old and she joined, wanted to join Amy Silverman's sneak peek and she wanted to join my sneak peek. And Amy and I are friends, so Amy was kind enough to message me and say, hey, um, Katrina joined, wants to join my, my sneak peek, and I noticed you are mutual friends. And I was like, yeah, she just joined my sneak peek too, and I just knew she would go to Amy. You know, I mean, who wouldn't go to Amy? That's, that was how my mind was thinking. But Amy was so kind and she, you know, reaching out to me. So I, of course, reached out to Katrina and I basically just said, you know, if you're coach shopping, I totally understand that. But, and I'm not going to beg you to be on my team, but this is what I have to offer. And I'm not going to bug you or um, pressure you by any means. It's totally up to you. And she chose me. So, and she chose my team and it made me feel so good. It's like, I, I do have a lot to offer and you should too. You do too. And you should feel good about sharing that part, those parts of you and never be ashamed or embarrassed about your age or your height or your weight or what color your hair is. Or if you want to let your hair go gray, you know, I look around a lot of beach body coaches have fake boobs. That's not me. So I'm not going to go out and get fake boobs because, you know, other beach body coaches that are successful. I'm not going to go out and get my arm sleeve because there's other beach body coaches with tattoos that are successful. That's not me. You have to be you. Um, you have to believe in yourself full heartedly. And that, all that comes from personal development. If you don't believe in yourself, you can't believe in other people. You can't. You have to believe in yourself. You can't help other people if you don't believe in yourself. You have to have a good, solid self-image, and it all comes from personal development. If you have doubts, do your personal development every single day. Do more than 10 minutes. 
flood yourself with it because it, as long as good's coming in, only good's going to come back out. And believe me, I thought personal development was another mistake I made when I was first in this business. I thought personal development was only for people who were broken. And I didn't think I was broken. I grew up in a freaking trailer park. Of course I was broken. I had to get over that stigma about personal development and I didn't think I needed it. And boy, did it change my life over the course of the last three and a half years. I am a completely more confident, driven, motivated, inspirational, solid person than I was. And I'm learning every day. I'm a work in progress, I will tell you, but I am not the person I was three and a half years ago by any means. Um, I don't care what people think about me. I don't care that I'm going to lose a few friends. I was just telling um, my team today in our success club group that when I, they're, they're, one of their fears is they're going to lose friends if they promote the business or sound too salesy. And I said, when I started as a Beachbody coach, I had about 400 friends on Facebook. I now have 2,500. So I don't think I lost any friends, right? And if I lost a few, there are probably people I didn't want on my bus anyways. That's, you know, that's just it. And over time, I became certainly, I'm sure many people's eyes in social media, less annoying. And because I started adding more value to their world. To, and, and so now people, I get messages every day, Shelly, I just love your posts. Thank you so much. You know, you made my day. How, or they'll say, Shelly, you were how, that post you did today. How did you know that that is exactly what I needed to read? So as long as you're adding value, you do not have to worry about losing friends on Facebook or Instagram or worrying about what your aunt Joe thinks. You know, it, it doesn't matter. And as long as you're consistent and true to your con true to yourself and your convictions about this company and your products, these products, you are going to gain, people will see your consistency. I haven't faltered in three and a half years from this business. I do the same things I was doing back then. I'm drinking Shakeology every day. I'm doing home workouts. I'm doing personal development. I'm, I'm doing everything I did three and a half years ago. Nothing's changed. I've been that precisely consistent with it because it works for me and people see that consistency now and they're going wow she's 47 now and she hasn't gained one pound back something must be working for her and so all those people who might have questioned me or judged me back then thinking I was nuts or going through a midlife crisis they're some of my best customers now and it's a really really good feeling to have those people reach out to me and say, okay, I've been following you for three years. You're doing something right. It's time for me to jump on board. So be here a year from now and you won't believe what's going to happen to your business. And all those people you think aren't looking and aren't paying attention are going to be knocking on your door and sending you messages because they're going to want to do what you're doing because you've been doing the same thing that's working for a long time. You have to fall in love with the journey have to fall in love with the journey and I'm completely in love with this journey um, let's see what else do I have for you um, back to wisdom you know we're all just in the same you know as older coaches like I said before we just were a little bit wiser we've been around the block we've you know worked on relationships in our lives we've probably been through every fad diet that's ever been out for the last 30 years from, you know, Metafast to SlimFast to Ephedra to whatever. We've tried it all. We've been through it all. We finally found something that works. You know, be grateful for that. Um, and be also be an example for people. I think, you know, that ties into all of this as well. It's, we're setting an example for many, many young women and that is really true to my heart and it could be something that you share as well is letting young girls know that you know it's tough to grow up now and that you're there for them that you're you've created this wonderful life without um 
hurting yourself, you know, as far as you're in stable marriages, maybe, or you're, you're looking through the positive, you're okay with yourself if you're single. Um, there's so many parts of you that are so good because you're older and you've been through it and you don't want to do it again. You don't want to go through all that crap. You overcame so many things in your life. Share that. Be the example. Put your, you know, let people put you on a pedestal. It's okay. Um, you know, people will admire you and love you and, and want to reach out to you because of what you've been through in your life. There's going to be a strong need for for women like us in Beachbody over the next few years to keep people kind of stable and grounded. And Dole keeps me grounded. When I start getting jealous, when I start getting afraid of what people think as far as my age, when, you know, there, I see more wrinkles or, or whatever. I mean, she, I, she'll be, she just completely keeps me grounded and she'll, she's only two years older than me, but I feel like, you know, she's, she's been a, she's a co-founding coach or a founding coach and she's been in the business for a long time. And, and, you know, she'll, she'll bring me back to earth when I think I need to be a 15 star diamond in two minutes, you know, she slows me down. She lets me breathe. You can be that for people on your teams as well. And not just your personally sponsored coaches, but your whole team. Work on teamwork and work on doing this together and work on loving each other as a team and helping each other as a team. And if your team is a lot like my team, we don't have a lot of men on our team. Um, I think that's typical for a lot of teams. But, you know, we, we just – are like a sisterhood that we just give each other great advice and pat each other on the back and lift each other up. And through those down times and feeling bad about yourself, you don't have to keep allowing that to happen. You know, be better and believe in yourself and, and reach out to those girls that you see might be struggling a little bit. Um, you know, if you are a mom and you've been through raising your kids and you see women on your team struggling with juggling everything, give them some advice, send them a message, you know, share that on your Facebook page so that other you attract other people like that. Um, you can give examples, you can role play, you can say, you know, so-and-so came to me and she was struggling with her potty training her child and I helped her with this and, you know, incorporate a little bit of beach body now she works out in the morning and you know she can have her day to help potty train her child or however potty training works I don't know but there's so many things that you can share about yourself and your wisdom and your heart and you know if you're a grandmother you have so many stories I know you do you can help your 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 kid, your daughters and your sons raise their children and how Shakeology and fitness can come into their lives and how you help them with that. There's so many ideas. Be creative and really go deep within and think about your life and your weekly life and your daily life and, and what you do for yourself that is so good that you can add and help other people and attract other people to your teams. Um, and I hope I'm not, I know I'm rambling, but I, I hope some of that helped. And Corey, if you have any questions or if anybody has any questions, um, I'm here to answer anything. So. No, not rambling at all. That was amazing. Thank you so much for all that. I, just watching you talk and the passion that comes through you is amazing. Um, I am very sorry to hear about your brother. I do remember when all that, happen in Anne's group and I, I never knew what really happened so I'm very sorry for that yeah and that was a big um turning point in my in my beach body career I'll just touch on that for a little bit because we all face and we will face um really really horrible things in our lives and and as much as we don't want those horrible things to happen they are going to happen and they have happened and they'll continue to happen and for a fleeting moment, you know, after my brother died, I, I mean, it was the worst thing that ever happened to me. And I didn't want to do the business anymore. I just, like, my energy 
was gone. It like the life was just sucked out of me. And I had, I was, I, I couldn't, you know, for a minute, I, I don't even know how to explain it, but I was just like, I'm just going to quit. I'm going to give this all up and just cut hair and live my little simple life. Even though I just wanted to, you know, throw myself in the ocean. I really had some suicidal thoughts at the time. Um, I was just so messed up over his death. And, and then I just had this epiphany that, you know what, this is, I can, help so many people and help myself if I just figure out how to get through this. And, and I did, and it was, it was one day at a time and I didn't resort to booze and I didn't resort to pills and believe me, all of it was offered to me, you know, to chill out, to have less anxiety, to be able to sleep. And I just refused it all. I kept up on my nutrition. I think I went at that time I hadn't drank for a year and a half and I drank and I had a couple good solid drunks with um, my sister-in-law, my brother's wife after he died. And I had a couple days where I only lived off snickerdoodles and I'm not kidding you snickerdoodles. That's all I ate because the church ladies made them for us. And, and I realized very quickly that sugar and eating crap and booze was not going to get me through. I needed to keep my head clear and thank God that I had already known what that felt like through clean eating and being so good to myself for so long that that was the only, that was the only way I was going to get through this grief. So I got myself on track. I forced myself to work out. I cried through almost every workout for the first six weeks, um, but I did it. And I continued to eat right, and I did not drink. And I had some sleepless nights, but I did a lot of praying and a lot of soul searching. And I started writing every day almost, or every couple days on Facebook, what I was going through and the grief that I was experiencing and how I was overcoming it. And believe me, when they, there are five stages of grief and they are all very real and true and we get through them at certain times. But there was a moment not long ago where I just realized acceptance was very, very close. And I got so tired of waking up so sad every day and being so sad during the day that I, I had to keep fighting for the positive and keep fighting for what was important. And I'm telling you, the only thing that helped on some days was opening up my computer and getting in my groups. It was the only thing that took my mind away from my grief and helping others. I felt so helpless myself. The only thing I could do was help others. And it really helped me heal and it helped me keep my head clear. And it helped me, um, you know, when you're going through all that, your thoughts and your emotions are so jumbled up like a puzzle, like nothing's fitting together and you're just scattered and unfocused. And it kept me grounded. Beachbody kept me grounded. And the tools I had and the support from my Beachbody family, and it, that went far and wide beyond my team, beyond Ann Doble's team. It reached into corporate. I mean, people were reaching out to me. I didn't even know because I was sharing my heart and I needed them. And it was so touching. It was such, it's such a beautiful tr thing that, that I experienced going through that grief. And I can't explain it any other way. I mean, it doesn't take away my loss or my pain or my brother's, it doesn't, my brother, you know, he will never come back. I'm not saying I'm completely healed or I'm okay with his death because I'm not. It was horrible and tragic, but I came out ahead of it and I came out on the other side and I could not have done that without this, without these people in my life, without these relationships I built, without learning how to share myself and my heart. And I thought, you know, if I could just, through my sadness and grief, help a few other people, I, I'm, that's, that's worth it to me to, to, to pull a piece of what I was feeling out of my heart and 
attach a picture to it on Facebook and write about how I felt. And I'm not kidding, those posts, if you went back on my timeline a year ago, those posts were the most engaging posts I, I could, I've ever seen. I mean, 200 to 500 likes on every single one. Every time I turned around, I had a message that I had touched somebody, that I was an amazing person. It was like personal development every single day. And I don't, I never felt like I was an amazing person. I don't feel like I'm an amazing person. I just shared my heart and I shared how I was overcoming this with the tools that I would have never had without Beachbody. Personal development, um, the outpouring, just being able to tell my story properly, speaking from my heart, not being intimidated about what other people might think about me, and being me, completely being me. I can't tell you, you know, take parts of your grief if you've had grief and turn them into a little bit of a story and share that with people and you won't believe what happens. And it's gonna help you too, it'll help you heal. It completely helped me through this healing process. And I look back um, a year ago, cause I remember vividly like, I, don't, I didn't even enjoy summer last year because I was so grief stricken. And waking up now at four o'clock in the morning, I bounce out of bed and I open the door and I start to look at the sunrise and, and I think about my brother and I'm in such a different headspace than I was. You know, I just, I'm telling you, I really wanted to be with him, which meant I wanted to die. And I thought of ways of doing it, believe me. I mean, not for like, I never really would have hurt myself, but I really just thought, I just want to see him again. And the only way I'm going to do that is if I die. <laughs> it's just really sad, but it's true. That's the truth. And, and now because I'm more open, I get signs from him every day. And I, you know, I just know he's with me and, and my heart is so different and I'm so different. And, you know, you can let these adversities in your life just completely wreck you and stifle you, or you can use them to help other people and use them to help yourself and be stronger, be better. Look at the big picture. Look at what you, you can help, you can do for somebody um, through your tragedies. And it, I'm telling you, will help you heal. It may not happen overnight. Like I said, it's been 16 months since he, he was lost at sea, but I am so much better than I was. And even in my marriage, and we were going through a lot of struggles and um, at the time, and we were in marriage counseling at the time Eric died. And then we went from marriage counseling. We were still going through marriage counseling. And then I was in grief counseling. So I was in therapy three hours every week, if not more. And finally, I just told my husband, I said, I can't do it anymore. It's draining me. I can't. I just have to get through this somehow. I don't want, I don't want to be counseled. I, I got to start going within myself. And I was completely reactionary with my husband. Um, we were not getting along and then all of this stuff I learned it just like this peace came over me and all came together and I just found patience and I found that when I didn't react I listened I started listening to my husband I there's so many good things that came out of this horribly tragic situation because I let myself feel it and I let myself get through it healthy and not with a bottle of wine every night and a bottle of pills. So, you know, be stronger than that because you all have, if you go through a horrible experience health wise or losing a parent or losing a child or losing somebody you love, um, use these tools that we've been given to help other people because they will help your, help you as well. So, you know, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and I don't think I meant to get into all that deepness, but maybe it touched a few of you, I don't know. Um, but it does, it feels good to talk about it. So thank you for the opportunity. And um, yeah. if, you know, if you do, any of you guys out there are, you know, as my age or can relate to any of this and you want, you know, 
me to give you any, you know, send me a private message. If you see me at summit, come give me a hug. You know, I just want you to know that I'm just normal, just every day person like you. And, um, and I'm here to help. I'm happy to help anybody, whether you're on my team or not. And it's success club. That is non-negotiable. Do your personal development. You're already doing, you're already a product of the product. You know, I know that or you wouldn't be on this call. So thank you so much thank you thank you thank you you it's incredible to, to watch you talk and to hear your passion and how you've overcome such tragedy and mind-blowing things that a lot of people would just introvert and give up like you felt like doing yeah. and you didn't you you took that and made it something stronger and came out on the other end and, and i'll tell you that year this was last year so um at the time my brother died, I think I was a two star diamond. And by the end of the year, I was a six star diamond and an elite coach. So you can see, you know, how I, I used my grief and what I was going through to fuel me and drive my business forward. That's where I put my energy and it, it was a good place to put it. Yeah, so. I'd say so. Very cool. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. You were such a sweetheart. I loved listening to you talk. And I know that my girls definitely got a lot of good information from that and um, are feeling just as inspired as I am because that was just incredible. You, you are an amazing person, Shelly, and we greatly appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. Thank you. And I'd love to um, have the link to the recording um, yeah. when you get it up. So I, there's a couple of people on my team I know who'd like to hear. Absolutely. So thank you. Good luck, everybody, with your business. And um, keep just doing those three vitals every day. Hit Success Club, and you will be hugely successful. I don't care if you're 10 or you're 80. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Shelly. We'll see you next time. Good night. How awesome was that? Awesome.